So, a little bit more than a month ago, my boys at Nintendo decided to put new Super Mario Bros U in the port machine and released new Super Mario Bros U Deluxe. I was quick to start playing it with the new character Peachette, aiming at completing the game without touching a single coin. If you haven't checked out that video, you should totally do it by clicking the card up there. But now, as you may know, the deluxe version of this game contains the new Super Luigi U DLC, which features 82 new courses for you to play on. Now, what if we try to complete these levels without touching a single coin? The rules are simple. We're gonna be playing through new Super Luigi U, playing as the brand new character Peachette, while avoiding all of the coins. Basically, there's a coin counter on the top left over here, and we are going to be trying to keep this lovely counter at zero. Collecting star coins doesn't increase the coin counter, so it won't be an issue in here. Peachette can be obtained by playing as Toadette and collecting a Super Crown, which is available right from the start in World 1-1. Taking damage as Peachette turns us back into Toadette, which will force us to lose a life and start the level over. So this means that in addition to avoid all of the coins, we cannot take any damage or use any power-up that would remove us from the Peachette form, you know, such as fire and ice flowers or propeller, mini mushrooms, squirrel suits. We're also also going to try to complete this game without using secret exits, that is, if possible. If we stumble upon a dead end and can be saved by a secret exit, then we shall do it. Now that everything has been set, it's time to see if we can beat new Super Luigi U Deluxe without touching a single coin. Here we go. World 1-1 is the intro level where you'll first grab your super crown and become the incredible Peachette. As you can tell, this level is not the most difficult one, mostly featuring platforms moving up and down, but just take your time and you'll dodge all the coins in here. World 1-2 does feature this part where you have to do a well-timed wall jump to dodge those coins, but it's not that difficult. World 1 Dash Tower is next, and let me tell you that this one is far from being easy. You see, you have to get up the tower by jumping on those moving cogs, but there are those very fast coins rotating all around them, so you'll actually have to hide inside the cogs while avoiding those fire torches. A couple of nerve wracking jumps later, you'll arrive at the top, and this level will be complete. World 1-3 is thankfully very easy, as it only features one critical jump over here where you must squeeze your way in between the coins and the platform. The rest of the level is pretty easy though. World 1-4 does feature a lot of piranha plants, moving platforms and coins. This part over here is especially annoying as you must glide in between all of this with perfect timing and execution. But wait, this next one is even more difficult. I actually couldn't figure out how to clear it, so I actually decided to glide under the platform, and it worked! World 1-5 does feature a plethora of coins, but with the help of Peachette's gliding ability, you'll make it to the end in no time. World 1 Dash Castle is next, and this one does contain a lot of coins on those platforms swinging left and right, but thankfully, you can dodge most of them by using Peach's spin jump and gliding abilities. Near the end of the castle, you're usually supposed to hit a P-switch to turn those coins into blocks, but with Peachette, you can just skip all of this and make it to Lemmy and defeat him, and now World 1 is done. World 2-1 is home of many fishy boopkins throwing spiky balls at you. Thankfully, we can use them to bounce in the air and glide out of the screen and skip most of the dangerous coins. World 2-2 takes place in a cave underground and does feature this one annoying part where you have those pokies hanging from the ceiling and preventing you from dodging those pesky coins. It takes patience, but wait for the perfect timing and you'll eventually beat it. World 2-3 takes place in a dark cave, with only a couple of lights to show you where to go. You can imagine this level is far from being easy, as you have to make nerve-wracking jumps in the dark to dodge coins and piranha plants. This is not a friendly level at all. 
World 2 Dash Tower is your next stop, and basically, you're supposed to spin those screws in order to make platforms appear. But if you spin them all the way, coins are also coming out of nowhere on top of those platforms. You'll have to spin them just enough for them to open up the top and then do some precise spin jumps to squeeze yourself up there without getting squished. Thankfully, you don't have to spin anything for this second part as you can wall jump left and right to get to the top. My strategy for this final part was to spin this all the way then to make your way to the left and climb up from there as there are no annoying coins as opposed to the right part which features a lot of them. And there we go, we did it. World 2-4 features those statues moving to the left. As they do contain coins on top of them, you'll have to make some wall jumps to dodge them all. Now, if you've been following me on Twitter, which you should be, you may remember this part here where dodging all of the coins is super spooky. To be fair, I do believe I got lucky making it to the end without touching a single coin and getting bit by those bad piranha plants. World 2-5 is next, and you'll want to dodge those bad guys throwing boulders on the platforms. Thankfully, you can use those same platforms to jump above all of the enemies and coins and make it safely to the end. World 2-6 is pretty easy if you take your time and take a good look at where the coins are on those moving platforms. World 2- Castle is up, and it's actually super easy. Basically, just glide above the lava and you'll easily make it to the end without touching one of those gross coins. Beat Morton, and we can now move on to World 3. World 3-1 is actually pretty easy, as most of the coins are hidden inside those huts. Just make sure you do not go inside of them and this level will be done in no time. World 3-2 is taking place underwater and there's a couple of coin bubbles that are really spooky. Thankfully, those golden cheap cheeps actually move out of your way, so it's pretty helpful. I gotta admit that this part with the urkins and the coin bubbles was pretty scary, but thankfully, it can be done. World 3 Dash Tower is our next stop, and it does contain a lot of spiky pillars moving super fast. Most of the platforms in here contain coins, so getting up there in time is insanely difficult. I eventually managed to make it there by being super lucky. But there's no way of dodging all those coins over here as Peachet as we are too tall. A million tries later, I am here to announce that I believe that this tower is not possible as Peachet only. Is this the end of the quest? Well, not really, as World 3 and 4 can both be accessed by going up or down this path. We tried going down, it was a failure, so let's go up to World 4. Welcome to World 4-1, a vertical level where you must go up. Those types of levels can be quite tricky, as you can't really see what's above you before you jump. You also have to avoid the bruisers punching barrels your way. This level is thankfully pretty easy though. World 4-2 does contain a whole lot of coins spinning in circles, but doing a peach at spin jump will give you enough height to go above it all. In fact, this is the strategy that I recommend for dodging pretty much every coins in this stage. Next up is World 4 Dash Tower, and it features tons of icicles ready to fall on you and stab you, but thankfully, our girl Peachette can dodge most of them. This part here is quite scary and requires a very precise jump, but besides that, this tower is pretty easy. World 4-3 starts off with a very tricky part where you have to go under those coins, which is kinda tricky. This part here with the million plants spitting fireballs is also very technical, but we can thankfully go under the platforms and make it to the end safe and sound. World 4-4 contains a lot of those Banzai bills, and they will be of great help to actually dodge all of the deadly coins. Basically, by bouncing on top of them, you can skip most of the level, which is pretty good. Next up is World 4-5, and this one is a big problem in this quest, as you automatically grab a coin once you go down this pipe. There's nothing you can do, you'll always grab at least one coin no matter what buttons you mash. Anyways, if we take a look at the rest of this level, there's like a bajillion coins, so dodging them would probably be impossible anyways. Thankfully, as this level was on a split path and we already completed 4-4, we can move on to 4-Ghost House. Now, this stage is a treat. Basically, you stand on those boxes, advancing through the stage, and when you reach those fake walls, they burst into deadly coins. 
This is not that much of a problem, but this part over here is extremely difficult. There is a circle of deadly coins, and around it is a circle of dangerous booze. I've tried to fit in between all of this for a long time, but no matter what, I always end up grabbing a couple of coins, and if I manage to avoid coins, I always got hit by the booze. Sadly, this level cannot be completed without grabbing a couple of coins. This is the end of the quest. Or is it? Listen, after three hours of trying, I had an epiphany. What if we grabbed a blue baby Yoshi, as these little guys can turn enemies into coin bubbles? Would you look at that? We can actually turn booze into coin bubbles. This means we can at least get rid of the boo circle and just focus on dodging those pesky coins. So you actually have to wait for the coin bubbles to disappear and there we go. We did it guys. We cleared this part and can finally move on to... Uh oh. Another one of those? And this one has two circles of deadly booze? And I got rid of the baby Yoshi earlier. Oh! So I tried again, I cleared the first part, then I carefully threw the baby Yoshi over there so that I could cross the path with the coins, and then I got the baby Yoshi back and carried him to the second deadly circle of booze. This level was so insanely difficult and technical that I finished it with 3 seconds on the clock to spare. Like, dude. That was hardcore. And wanna hear the best news? We did all of this for basically nothing. Welcome to World 4 Dash Castle, a castle where you must go from platforms to platforms as fast as possible because of those swamps that break the blocks under your feet. Now tell me, how can we do this without touching a single coin if there are some coins on every bricks? Well, the truth is, you can't. This level is actually impossible. This is a dead end once again. And now, with both World 3 and World 4 out of the picture, we have to rely on using a secret exit that could bring us to World 5. Turns out there's one that could be useful in World 2-4. So if you do a ground pound over there, you can get up in the sky and reach out a brand new level. World 2 Dash Plant is up, and this one is super easy. It features plant spitting fireballs, but I mean, dodge them all, and you'll clear this level in no time. And look at that a shortcut that leads us right to World 5. Now that is epic. World 5 1 contains a lot of those vines, but trust me, you don't want to swing them, because if you do, you'll end up touching some of those coins. So basically, you want to grab a vine and wait for it to almost come to a full stop before jumping to the next one. But besides that, this level is kind of easy. World 5 2 is also pretty easy, as most of the coins can be avoided by simply gliding above them all. World 5-3 features those spider thingies and basically you want to fly above them to avoid collecting any deadly coins. Next up is World 5-Tower and it requires you to stand on the green snake block while dodging those spiky enemies and those bad coins. But to be fair, this level looks way more difficult than it actually is. You'll quickly learn the ropes and get to the top to defeat Boom Boom and move on. World 5 Dash Ghost House is up, and basically, you want to stay as high as you can in the air to dodge the coins, and that's pretty much it. World 5 Dash 4 is also pretty easy. Basically, take your time, make your move when it seems safe, and make sure to enter this pipe over here to reach out the secret exit, as it's the only way of actually advancing to the next level. World 5-5 is our next stop, and basically, this one requires you to grab a coin to enter the pipe, so it's kinda bad. Thankfully, ground pounding this statue here does give you access to a secret exit, but to be fair, I didn't manage to clear this part without collecting one of those annoying coins that pops out of nowhere. I'm pretty sure that this level can actually be done without touching a coin, but I tried for a while and I couldn't do it, and to be 100% honest with you, I couldn't be bothered to keep trying, cause we already completed 5-4 and we can already move on to 5-6, so 
so beating 5-5 is kind of pointless, why bother? World 5-6 features lots of coins and those sumo enemies that create electricity on platforms under them. This will be annoying, especially near this part here where there's three of them and tons of coins to dodge. Basically, I suggest getting inside that pipe as soon as you can to get near the end of the level and beat it easily. World 5-7 is up and this one wants you to go up by bouncing on wigglers and it's not the most complicated level ever. But sadly, to complete the level you have to go up the pipe over here. And sadly there's no way of going up that pipe without touching a coin, so this one's impossible. But once again, we were on a split path, so we can still go to the next level. World 5 Dash Castle features tons of coins popping up from the lava as you swing from chains to chains, but to be fair, if you make sure to stay near the very top of those chains, you'll be good and this level will be done in no time. Defeat Iggy and we can move on to World 6. World 6 1 is actually quite easy as you can pretty much glide above the entire stage and skip it all together. For World 6 2, You'd want to stick to the very top of those purple poles as there's a lot of deadly coins down there. Slide under those two coins and this level is complete. World 6 Dash Tower features a little problem over here. You see, you're technically supposed to hit the invisible blocks to create a bridge so those spiky things break the blocks and let you pass. But sadly, some of those blocks feature coins. Thankfully, on each side there's an invisible block with a moon inside of it instead of a coin. So this means we can still create the bridge needed without collecting a coin and therefore allowing us to complete this level and move on. World 6-3 is super easy, just spin jump your way to the top while dodging those fishy boopkins. World 6-4 is a very difficult stage. This stage is a vertical auto-scroller set in the dark featuring tons of enemies, hidden coins, and deadly plant spitting fireballs. You'll actually have to play this stage and memorize where the coins will pop if you want to finally be able to complete it. It takes time, but it is possible. World 6-5 contains a lot of annoying plants that will make it insanely difficult to dodge all of the coins. Although it may be possible, we have our blue Yoshi buddy available just over there. So let's use his bubble ability to clear out a safer path for us to get to the end. World 6 Dash Tower number 2 is up, and this one is quite easy as you can climb the tower using Peachette's spin jump ability. Just make sure to watch out for those sumo dudes. Welcome to World 6 7, and as you can see, this one features a problem right from the start. You have to get inside that pipe, but there are coins right on top of them. There's actually no way of going down without at least getting one coin. But anyways, the rest of the level did not seem promising, so we'll have to call this one impossible. What do we do now? We're kinda stuck here. Well, not quite. If we go back to world 6-5, we can use the secret exit over there to create a path allowing us to hit the red switch and therefore bringing us to world 6-castle. And since we're getting in that castle via the back exit, this level is super easy and will be done instantly. With Roy defeated and out of the picture, we can finally move on to world 7. 7-1 is super easy, as you can bounce on top of those ice bros to skip most of the level. World 7-2 is also quite the easy level and doesn't feature any annoying coin. For World 7-3, you want to stay on the very center of the rainbow platform to dodge the coins located left and right. And the remaining of the level is quite easy. World 7-tower is up and this one will be quite the problem. The first part here can be done while dodging all of the coins, but as soon as you reach this final part over here, we have a big problem. You see, there are tons of deadly coins and there's basically nowhere to go to dodge them all. Plus, the platforms on the roof and the floor just close in together super fast, so you have to run as fast as you can to avoid getting squished. Sadly, I tried this for hours and hours and I couldn't complete it without touching a coin. In fact, my best run was this one where I collected 3 coins. 
I also checked out Sieve Gaming's video on the matter and he managed to complete this stage coinless by using a mini mushroom only. But sadly we cannot be using this as this is a peachet run and there is no secret exit allowing us to skip this stage. So yeah, we're gonna have to take a hit and get 3 coins in here. I know, heartbreaking. World 7-Ghost House is up and this one is super annoying. Basically, you'll want to go back and forth on those question blocks to trigger those fake question blocks to attack you and explode. The difficulty here is that those bad blocks explode into one deadly coin. After a lot of back and forth, you'll eventually make it to the end and clear the stage. World 7-4 is pretty easy, except for this part here, where you can get trapped by deadly coins if you're not fast enough, so make sure to clear this level as fast as you can. World 7-5 is pretty easy if you stay in the air and glide to safety. World 7-6 is also super easy and doesn't feature any difficult part. World 7-Castle is up and thankfully this one is also pretty easy. There's a clear and easy path to dodge all of the coins without needing to stop for too long, so that's kinda cool. With Ludwig out of the way, there's only one more stage in this world. World 7-Airship is next and this one is actually quite easy as Peach Shet, because you can actually glide to dodge all of the coins. Defeat Bowser Jr. and we can move on to the final world. World 8-1 is one of the most annoying levels in this entire run. You see, you need to jump above most of the coins if you want to dodge them, but then there are those fireballs falling from the sky in a totally random pattern which can ruin your day instantly. This will take a lot of tries and you'll have to be lucky, but eventually the fireballs will be good to you and you'll finish the level. World 8-2 features this boat part which can get quite tricky because you need to defeat enemies to make the boat advance, but your jumping opportunities are heavily restricted by those bad coins everywhere. World 8-3 is a problem because of this part over here. There is sadly no way to dodge those 3 coins as Peachet, so this stage is actually impossible. Thankfully, we can go back to world 8-1 and use the secret exit which is located up here. With it, we can reach world 8-4, which features a super spooky beginning with moving platforms and moving coins, but once you clear that part, the rest is pretty easy. World 8-Castle is next and this one is not very difficult. Basically, you'll want to hold the controller to the right to make the platforms move and you'll then need to jump and crouch to dodge the electricity and the bubbums with the little parachutes. World 8-Bowser is also very easy, as you can use Bowser Jr's clown cart to skip most of the level. The first part of the Bowser fight is pretty easy and so is the second one if you take your time. And there we go, we defeated Bowser once again and we saved Princess Peach in the world of Super Luigi U as Peachette. So, is it possible to beat new Super Luigi U Deluxe without touching a single coin as my girl Peachette? Well, sadly, no, it isn't as we are forced to collect a minimum of 3 coins in World 7 Dash Tower. But that's all, only 3 coins, it's not that bad. Thanks a lot for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and make sure to hit subscribe and hit the like button. If you want to see more of those videos, make sure to tap the cards on screen right now. It's the challenge playlist so you'll see I have done plenty of those and I suggest you binge watch them all. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one.